Take a look at pretty much any video game that was widely acclaimed over the course of history and apart from just being made at the right time or being the first of its kind, every good video game or video game series has defining traits to them that merit their critical success. But even outside of dealing with public scrutiny, those games also capture the hearts and eyes of players all over the world. Usually the appeal of those games come from word of mouth and the omnipresence of social media, which at this point is probably more important than actual real life advertisement. But in order for a game to be successful, apart from being released at the right time and getting lucky, it needs to be good to live up to the hype. And today I'm going to be talking about 5 qualities every good video game should have. Mind you, there are hundreds of different aspects to games that are needed for it to be truly one of those legendary games. But just like how they're an expression of art, you don't need to cover every single base. In fact, you can have a very successful title just by doing one single thing really well. It's just the more aspects you nail, the better your game will be. But anyways, let's get right into it in no particular order. Number 1. Replayability Currently that seems to be the most driving force in the industry, as most if not all of the top tier games today have a huge focus on that. Replayability at its base definition entails games that grant players an incentive to continue playing it over and over because of its ability to grant you a different or nuanced experience every time not restricting it to simply deleting the save file and starting a new one, although that is also an option. That's usually how you would look at it, especially with the growing standards on what makes a good game, being given the option to continue on with the video game after your initial playthrough can be deal breaking for some people. In fact, nowadays, most games that come out and are high selling games are the ones that have multiple means of playing through the game, be it various game modes, certain characters, or games that split paths based on the decisions you make. Even before replayability became the meta in a sense for video games in the new 10s, back between 1990 and 2010, it was also a great quality for games to have. In fact, that's what made RPGs the reigning king back when we were all kids, because while the gameplay remained basically the same in every possible way, the fact that you could choose the characters you want to level up, or if there were aspects of randomness to games such as character growths, is what caused such a strong retaining memory for us. Of course, nostalgia plays an important role, but that may very well be the reason why we come back to older games. There were hundreds of games during the era of Nintendo DS, GameCube, PlayStation 2, etc. But the ones that stand out the most are the ones that don't always give you the same experience every time. Well, once again, nostalgia does play a role. A game's replayability is not just based on its immediate popularity, but also how memorable each gameplay feels to the player. One might argue that people go back to those games because they have special sentiment, but it's not like that sentiment comes out of nowhere. Those games are fun to pick up and replay for a reason. Achieving good replayability is a difficult task, because the more diverging paths you make in a game, the harder it is to hold everything up to the same level of quality. That's why PvP games are doing so well right now, because the developers technically don't have to do anything. The players give each other a sense of replayability, not the game itself. Number 2. A clear essential experience this is the main reason why I got tired of Minecraft servers back in when I was in high school because it felt like every server in the world had the exact same things. Hunger Games, Factions, Skyblock, Prisons, Bed Wars, Hub Server, Creative, blah 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 blah. Games that attempt to be jack of all trades are, in my opinion, horribly designed because you don't really understand how you're supposed to play the game to the fullest. That's why it's better to do one thing really well instead of trying to do multiple things at the same time. While variety is always great, you want to have a central aspect to your game. Many video game series are built off of an essential experience in the game. For instance, if you think of any Legend of Zelda game, you think of puzzles and dungeons, or solving one area to get to the next, a real fantasy theme to it as well. If you think about Pokemon, which is capturing mythical creatures, raising them, making them stronger, and then using them to fight other creatures, you think of Super Smash Bros and it's all about beating the crap out of your friends. Even if those games all have different side features like secret bases and underground for Pokemon, or World of Light for Smash Bros, everyone knows the main focus of those titles. It's a clear image in their head. Having a key essential experience in a video game is important, because not only does it mean you can give players a tailored and defined experience in terms of gameplay, but it also makes the game unique. That's why the best games in the industry's history come from having that one thing it does really well. That isn't to say games that don't have a pronounced essential experience are bad per se. After all, sandbox games like Minecraft's popularity starting 2010 came from you being able to create whatever the hell you want. And then players took that and used their creativity to make a bunch of cool mini games or impressive works. You got to choose the experience that you wanted to have. But that's really difficult to execute properly since the further you stretch out the plane of possibility, the less quality is concentrated in one spot. And that's also why open world games start out really cool, but then burn out on people quickly, unless you're good at them, which not many developers are. Sometimes giving players the ability to choose the experience may not work well because then there's no clear image for the game. 
Putting in constraints for how a player should play the game would give them a better understanding of how the game is intended to be played. Number 3. Story without speech This quality is dependent on whether your game is meant to have any lore or narrative to it, such as Final Fantasy, Fire Emblem, Tomb Raider, Undertale, just to name a few. But for other games where story doesn't really have a commanding presence such as Fortnite or League of Legends, it's pretty inconsequential. When I say story without speech, I mostly mean the traditional rule of thumb in writing. Show, don't tell. But elaborating more on that, many would draw the conclusion that the story in a game is dialogue or cutscenes, or a bunch of text plastered on a screen. Not necessarily. Good games are able to mesh the narrative into the gameplay so seamlessly that you get an idea for how characters behave, what their motives are, personality quirks, and above all, their development without actually explaining it in text. In some circumstances, dialogue is necessary, after all, that's how books tell stories. But great games are able to capture the character's emotions and create a link of empathy between the players and the game, not by simple NPC cutscenes, but more in the subtle little details the game adds. A similar analogy would be a person trying to tell you that this cake you're looking at is the most delicious cake in the world, as opposed to you actually tasting the cake yourself. Games shouldn't tell you what's going on, it should show you what's going on, it should make you see listen, and sometimes even feel what's going on. One thing that I noticed among players who play for gameplay and players who play for story is that both sides believe that the other side is incapable of caring much about their side. So a gameplay person doesn't care about story and a story person doesn't care about gameplay. But the best games are able to communicate both aspects to both players, even if it's subtle, since story and gameplay are not mutually exclusive, in fact they complement each other. Unless really important for the game or the franchise is well known for doing it, cutscenes are not really people's favorite and many would just skip them or mash the A button. That's why games are shifting more towards dialogue that happens during regular gameplay rather than stopping all experience to play a small episode. This way the players who care more about gameplay can continue doing what they're doing while still getting a feel for the character development and the narrative, while story players can still get their fix. Number 4. Substance. You ask anybody what they look for in a romantic partner and the majority of them in their heart of hearts want personality. They want character. They want substance. Make no mistake, one's appearance does have impactful contribution to a degree. You need to draw their attention after all. But once the attention is caught, you need to give them a reason to stay with you instead of just dropping you and finding some other person. Substance in a video game is the core of player retention. In fact, the previous three qualities mentioned are all part of substance. But for the sake of this list, when I say substance, I'm referring to what the features are in a video game and how well they're designed. I'm majoring in game design and development in college right now, and in one of my classes there were two concepts taught to us called feature creep and feature depth, where feature creep was having a bunch of things all at surface level at best, while feature depth was having a few things but packed with, well, depth to it. Also known as quantity versus quality. If you remember earlier in the video when I said games that don't provide a clear essential experience such as open world games where you can do whatever the hell you want and the scale of the game is so big, that's what I mean by substance. There's a lot of stuff to do but it's all superficial. It's better to do one or two things impeccably than to do 50 things haphazardly. Most games that overscope run into this issue where a lot of features to it look like they could have been looked further into, just never really got around to that point. Now I don't mean this in that every feature in a game must be super extensive and be games in games, but you should never have something for the sake of just being there. It should serve as a contributing factor to the overall experience and enjoyment of the game, and not just be one of those things that you can completely neglect and still get the same feel for the game. This in particular is kind of fickle, because players are also the influencer here. If we take a game that say has an alchemy feature to it, where you can grow your own herbs to make your own curatives, and there's a whole system of alchemy involved in the game, but a player would rather just buy basic potions from the NPC to get through the game, that's their prerogative. Conversely, if the feature takes away from the game's experience, then it's sometimes best advised to not have it in at all. If a feature is meant to be an optional additive instead of an important part of the game, it should at least not be disruptive to the atmosphere or the progression of the game. Substance is important in a game, you wouldn't want to just bite into a piece of cake and then have it be nothing but cake batter, but it wouldn't be very appropriate to put fried chicken inside it either. Or would it? Number 5. Good music. I could have put anything for number 5, but this one's a bit of a biased opinion. Then again, this video is not fact based since every game designer and critic has different views on which qualities are the most important, but good music. Having a great soundtrack for a game not only immerses players into the experience of the game, but it can also speak volumes for public relations. As you know, different people are drawn to different styles and genres for games, and if you play that right, sometimes music can give a big boost to the game's ratings. At least for me, even if a game really isn't that great, if it has a beautiful soundtrack that really resonates with the game, 
that can definitely give them a few extra bonus points. Although don't misunderstand, good music does not make a good game. However, a good game needs good music. You still have to execute well on everything else. I'm just saying that a 5 out of 10 game with a kick-ass soundtrack, in my personal opinion, can bump it up to maybe a 7 out of 10. Likewise, a game with really terrible and out-of-place soundtrack can turn a 7 out of 10 game into a 5 out of 10. Composing a bad soundtrack is actually really difficult to do these days because even games that are colloquially regarded as bad in the gaming community still have some pretty decent music. That's mostly because nowadays, game developers hire a third party or independent composer to take care of that since, well, they're experts at it. Just like the fact that not everyone is into the story of a game, not everyone is into the music as well. But if you're good enough with your soundtrack, it can make games more memorable even for those players that don't pay too much attention to it. I'd love to talk about other qualities good video games should have, but that would make this video too long. Things like graphics, voice acting, multiplayer, and quality of life and such would also fall into things, but who knows, maybe I might make a part two. Like I said at the very beginning of the video, if you want to make the perfect game, well, you can't because it's a mile long list of things that even AAA companies can't get through. But all in all, if you look at all the good games that came out over the past half century, no matter what genre they are or what demographic they're intended for, you notice consistencies in what kinds of games get the clean 7.8. That being said, the amount of resources and manpower invested into a game does not directly translate to a higher quality game, which can be exemplified by the upsurge of indie game developers. If anything, I would say the most important quality a video game should have is heart. A person's dedication, passion, perseverance, and love for the game is what truly makes it good. If you make a game just for the sake of glory, profit, or fame, you're doing it wrong. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. It's not quite as discussion based as it is so much just a top 5 video of my own opinion. Nonetheless, if you made it through all the way to the end, thank you so much. As per usual, you guys get to decide which videos will come next. If you enjoyed, a rating would be much appreciated, and let me know in the comments section below what qualities you think is the most important in a video game. Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you guys again soon in the next video. Take care.